Hello everyone. We have seen machine learning done on relational data, means the data is highly structured. We have also seen machine learning performed on image and videos data, and also it can be performed on the audio data. However, if you are trying to process the audio data for the machine learning, you have to prepare yourself to know how you could process the audio files so you can extract the important signals which can be used for your machine learning project. So this tutorial is designed to learn how you can process different types of audio files to extract the signals from those audio files and you also can extract the features from those audio files depending on your machine learning requirement. So hello again, my name is Avkash. And in this tutorial, we are going to use the LibRosa Python library to learn how to read various audio files and process them to learn more about the different features available in those audio files as a digital component such as frame, amplitude, time frequencies, etc. In the later part of this tutorial, we are going to use the same Librosa library to extract features related with machine learning requirements. The key features we are going to extract in this tutorial are zero crossing rate, spectral centroid, spectral roll-off, MFCC, chroma frequencies, RMS, and while you are going to extract those features, you are going to learn various methods which can be used to, to get deeper knowledge about Librosa Python library as well. I'm glad that you are here with me. So let's get ourselves started now. The resources related with these tutorials are found here. First, I really went through with this music information retrieval project. There is a great amount of information available if you are interested into processing audios related with machine learning or just you just want to learn how to process audio and then you can decide if Python is your programming language of choice to work with audio processing. So this is a great resource for anyone to please go ahead and try. Next, I also found this article, great amount of information in this article. So the credit goes to the author very well. And third, the library used in this project is Librosa. So this library is very popular library for processing audio using Python programming language. And I would say that majority of the code used in this music information retrieval project is also used from Librosa. So you can understand that the power of the library itself and the tutorials related with Librosa are also available in their documentation section. So there is a great deal of information. I I'm going to provide you, but still there is a massive amount of information for you to explore by yourself. So please go ahead and enjoy these resources by yourself. And before we start our tutorial, I wanted to let you know that the Jupyter Notebook related with this tutorial are available at this public code repo where the folder is machine learning and inside this Python audio tutorial, you can find all the Jupyter notebooks related with this hands-on lab or this uh, audio processing tutorial using Python. So as you could see here, I already have Jupyter server running on my local machine and I will start with very first tutorial. So in this tutorial, we are going to use the Python library Librosa, which is here. So you need to install the Librosa library 
for audio and music processing in Python. That's the whole idea behind it. I already have that library installed and currently I'm using version 0.9.1. If you need to get the royalty free music for you to process while you are going through with this tutorial, the royalty free music which I got for my own tutorial, they all came from this Ben Sound website. So please feel free to download and process. So let's start the quick information related with how we can get ourselves started. I already have library installed. So very first thing, I'm going to import the library. Here, all these Jupyter notebooks and here's the royalty free music folder. And as you could see here, some of these files are available. So we have MP3, we have WAV, and you can also have the WMA files. So there are the primary WAV kind of files which we process in general. So I will be loading this bensound dubstep.mp3 as our source file. Very quickly, once you want to get working with any of audio content, first you really need to load it. So you are going to use the librosa library and you are going to load the audio. So when you are going to load any audio file with librosa.load, what it does basically, it loads this audio file and generate the time series signal. So basically you are getting the time fre frequency of a given file based on the timestamp and it also gives you the sample rate. So those two things you are going to get back. So you see here that your music array, which is the first item, it basically the NumPy ND array and then second is the sample rate. So as you could see here that this time series based frequency has that many signals and the sample rate for this given audio is 22, 22K Hertz. So you could say here that the above selected audio time series is a NumPy array and the default sampling rate, which is the sample rate here, is the 22 clay hertz. Now we are using the same library and we are loading, but this time when we are loading this audio file, we are setting up the sample rate. So it's music array to sample rate two, and we look into here. And as you could see that the samples, the number of frequencies are doubled here because now we have 44k hertz. So given file has been resampled because the sampling rate was changed. So because of that sampling rate, now the number of signals just got doubled. If we try to load the audio file and this time we are not touching the sample rate, and as you could see here that music array three and sample rate none is still is taking the default 44k. So there are three different ways you have seen how we have loaded the audio file using the Librosa library. So you have these two objects. One is your signals on time, so time series signals, and second, your sample rate. So these two objects will be used. So first one is only the object numpy and the array and then second is just the integer value of the sample rate. So what is the sample rate? So the sample rate is the number of samples carried by the selected audio per second. So it's measured either in hertz or kilohertz. So that many sample per second. Now if you would want to play this audio you can actually play here. And if I try to play this music, you could stop it. So you get an idea that you could play the audio directly in IPython. And now we are going to 
use the waveform visual visualization for this audio signal. So we are using the matplotlib library and we are also using the LibRosa display modules. We are first using the matplotlib. So we are defining this plot and then next we are using the LibRosa.display.waveshow passing the array and the sample rate and color of our graph. And that's how you are really seeing. If you try to change these numbers to, for example, and color to, you will get a little different view. So this is the waveform visualization of this given audio file. Now we are going to look into the spectrogram visualization. So what is a spectrogram? So a spectrogram is a visual representation of the spectrum of frequencies, a spectrum of frequency of sound or other signals as they vary with time. So as the time changes, how the signal change. And it also, you know, call these sonographs, voice prints, voice cramps in two dimensional array. The first axis is frequency while the second axis is the time. So here, a spectrogram visualization is a Librosa STFT. We are passing the array and that gives us the value. Then, then after we amplitude to dB. So now we have this X dB. We can look into, as you could see here, these are just the frequencies. Now we are going to use the Librosa display and spectrogram show so a spec show function taking the xdb which we have just converted and rendering on sample rate and x-axis is time y-axis is hertz and here is your spectrogram graph is visible so as you could see here from 0 hertz to 22 k hertz frequencies are and depending on the time because if you look into this music which is about two minute, four second long video. So you are seeing this two minute, four second. Some of the frequencies are up to here, but as you see that majority of the frequencies are at the higher scale. Now, the next step would be to take this spectrum and convert it to a logarithmic scale. So again, 44K, And here y-axis is the log. So initially we were using the y-axis is the hertz. So in the logarith logarithmic scale, you will see that the values are <coughs> being calculated on a log x. Next, we will try to use this beat tracker. So Librosa library gives you the beat track. It, it tells you that how many beats per minute this given audio sample has. So it shows that this audio sample has about 73 beats per minute. In two minute video, that many beats are there. And here we can, you can see here that this is the tempo and the beat frames. Let's frames to time. So we are taking the beat frame and using the sample rate, we are converting to the beat time, here you could see the beat time depending on per minute is a twice of this and here is the beat time really look like. Now we are going to take the beat time and we will show the graph. So here you could see that beats are visible. If you would want to save your audio files which is in memory to the disk you are going to use this sound file and when you install the Librosa the sound file package if it was not there it is already installed as a dependency so you could access the sound file here you are passing the music so the library is music array 2 so here is your music array 2 and so you are going to call whatever you name it. So this is called temp file 
1, sample rate, measure carry 2, and sample rate was the sample rate 2. Oh, sorry. Temp file 1 is available here. And if you would want to take the same music array 2, and rather than the given sample rate, you want to change the sample rate, and you want to say, OK, use the 48k sample rate with the different encoding, you could call it temp file 48k, because we are sampling on 48k. We are writing it. And if you look into ls, now you have these two files. And if you would read this file again, you try to get its play. So you see here when we, so this is like almost two minute time, 140 to two minute here. And that's where you could see here that 154. So that's matches around here. So that's what quick example of using the Librosa library. I have another example, which is next to, to get the clarity about the peeps. So let's, the peeps. So let's use the second example, which is the beat retrieval from music. We are importing Librosa and IPD. So we could play the audio then matplotlib and then Librosa display. Again, we already have these files available. So this time we are going to play the 58 BPM dot wave and let's, it's an eight second video. Here we could see the wave. So now you could see the difference between, that gives you an idea that how this waveform really look like based on how the music is being played. Now we are converting to deck XDB, which we have done last. And then here is our spectrograph for this one. And as you could see here, these bends are related with the music here. So now our objective will be to display the beats. So here and tempo is 117.45 beats per minute. And as you could see here, the beat, there are 14. And here are the beats in this eight second video. So this demo does show that how the beats really look like if we want to superimpose the beats, if we want to superimpose the beats on top of a spectrograph. And here, if you are going to use the IPython widgets, and here is the beats per minute, and these values, how this array is going to change. So if you would want, you can actually take this array value, you change it, and then you can process it. So it's all depend on the way you would want to change the beats. Because it generates a different array, you can save them and you can process them. Next, we are going to create the music by ourselves. So rather than loading an audio file from the disk, we are going to make the music and work on it. So importing the required libraries, we are going to create the music sample rate will be 20k kilohertz and the time for five seconds. So now the time axis is being created. If you would want to say, okay, what is the Timex dot shape that many samples okay for the 220 hertz here is our x and if we look into the, the value of x which is the that for five so 22 k samples per second for five second 22 times five so that many samples so that math is good for us there is the amplitude. So if you look under the amplitude and this is basically the what we are creating is, is the same thing. So what here we are creating the amplitude. Now we are plotting the sine wave, time x, amplitude. So for five second, now plotting the audio. This is what we have built. 
Now, if you would want to save this file on disk, you could just save it. So here we already have seen that how you could save a file and if you are saving, you can change the sample rate as well. So you get an idea that if you'd want to create these audio signals, you could change, you can create these audio different signals and then you can patch them up, append them together and you finally end up creating a audio file. So we have seen three different examples. One was quick way to understand how Librosa library can be used to read and process the audio files. Second, just a single example to use the Librosa library to retrieve the beats. And finally, third, we learn how to create the audio signals by ourselves using the library. After that, we are going to work on the feature extraction. And feature extraction is the place where we process the audio in a way so that we can learn more hidden information given in audio. So let's start with zero crossing rate. So very first thing, what is zero crossing rate? So zero crossing rate, you can think that each time when the signal crosses from positive to negative boundary, it counts as a one. If we look into the graph, just for understanding while we are looking into, so this is the zero boundary as whenever you are crossing the boundary of zero one, that will be considered your zero crossing rate. So the zero crossing rate is the rate of sign changes along with the signal. So when the frequency is really change based on negative or, or positive, like above zero, below zero, with the time you are considering that there is a zero cross happened. So zero crossing rate is the rate at which the signal changes from positive to negative or back. So let's build it. So here we have all these modules loaded. We are going to use this 58 BPM wave. This is the file. Here is our wave graph, samples. Now, if you look into the size, the number of samples are 182,000. And we are just sampling the only 20 samples from 10,000 to 20. So we could get an idea that how many zero crossings are in this given sample. So based on that, if we use N0 to N1 for this 20, you could see there are 11. So you, if you count between here, you will get the 11 numbers of cross between 0 to 1 to so 0 crossing. If you are taking the whole file and then find how many zero crossings are there, there are 71,000 zero crossing out of 1882,000 signals. So that gives you how many times. So this is just an example. So if you just want to go, for example, uh, 15,000 and 100. If you use these 100 signals and if you look into the crossings, there are 45. So you can get an idea that how you could get the zero crossing depending on the number of signals you are using when you are trying to get this zero crossing. So here is a librosa dot zero crossing function used to get that number. So here I have created a function so we could get any time for any file if you want to get the zero crossing you just give the file name so for example here if you want this pen sound we say how many zero crossing is going to tell you so that's a feature extraction related with giving audio signal so you can just choose whatever is your interest is and you are going to get those zero crossing counts here you could see so this is one example of feature extraction from the audio files. Now let's use the another one and we are going to use this spectral centroid. So what is a spectral centroid? You can think about the spectral centroid indicates where the center of mass for a sound is located. So a lot of information I found in this uh, article, I think here. So if you want to go more deeper, you can look into this article. 
So it's calculated as the weighted mean of the frequencies present in the sound. So it's a weighted mean. So you can think like that way. So there is one example that if you have a blue genre and if you have the metal genre. So my knowledge is really very less in this uh, whole music world. So I really don't know a lot, but I have just quoted the way it was written there. So for the blues song, the spectral centroid will lie somewhere near the middle of its spectrum. And for the metal song, the spectral centroid would be towards its end. So somebody would want to validate it. That would be a very good idea. Take one blues song and one the metal song. So let's load the libraries required for our project. Here is our source file. Let's make sure. So this is our source file. Now here is, you see, we are using the Librosa dot features and the spectral centroid. It gives us all the centroids. Here we are taking this and then just taking the value. So now we are getting this 357 and number of frames, frames to time. So now you could see T 357 and now we are normalizing them. And finally, once this normalize, so the normalize min max scale and the spectral centroid. So the depending on your music, you could say that what is your spectral centroid for a given music. If you want to save this and you would want to use a different music, you can use this. So we have that. That's this is the way music look like. We are reading the centroids. This is a normalize, and then rather than changing this, I will use. Now you could see here the centroid is here for this one. So this is just a eight second. This is about two minute. So you could see that where the centroids are visible. So we have learn the centroid ex feature extraction. Next, we are going to look into the spectral roll off. So spectral roll off is a measure of the shape of the signal. So it represents the frequency below which a specified percentage of the total spectral energy, whatever percent is is there so total spectral energy related with given signal and we are going to use the Librosa feature spectral roll off. So we are importing the required libraries and then this is we already have here we are using the spectral roll off and still you see that everything frames we have already processed last time we are normalizing and now we are seeing so the difference was what method was used rest is all same so here you could see the spectral roll off so if you want to see the difference between these two you have to look into side by side if i take this out this is spectral roll off definitely there are some changes let me put it back so one more way to extract the features. So we have covered the three of them. Next in our list is male frequency sepastral coefficients or MFCC. So MFCCs are just a small set of features between 10 to 20 that concisely describe the overall shape of a spectral envelope. So whether you have a two second video or you have a 20 minute video, you are going to get these MFCC feature set, which is a collection of between 10 to 20 feature sets. And all the music related information is packaged in that MFCC feature set. And those MFCC is actually it's designed to model the characteristics of the human voice. But even if the audio does not have human voice, still you are going to get these MFCC values in any given audio package. So we are importing our 
required libraries. We are reading the same 58 BPM wave and that's our wave is. We have already seen our wave plot and here you see that we are using the Librosa.features and when we pass this our ND array or the NumPy array of frequencies and with sample rate and here you get the 20 sets of feature sets for the 357 signals. Now passing it and that's what you could really see in this MFCC graph. So here we have 20 MFCC features for the 357 frames and in the next step to using the sklearn uh, scaling func functionality we are also performing the feature scaling so that each coefficient so each mfcc coefficients dimension can have the zero mean and unit variance so that's what we are trying to do here so mfcc mean mfcc variance and then showing the graph. So that's you are seeing the featured scaled graph which has the zero mean and unit variance for the each coefficients. If you just want to find the total MFCC features for various files. So here I have just a custom method. Here a stereo file. Let's see if we have. So we can use something maybe temp file one. And here you could see that this temp file one has the 20 features. If we take a different file from another, and let's use this uh, this example. Oh, this is already here, and that is also going to have I think 18 or 20. So it's 22 for the 5379 frames. So these two temp file one. So temp file one, I think this is a copy of this file. If we want to use a different one just for music 24 775 frames. So we get an idea that what these MFCC feature sets are, how you can extract from the audio file, and how you could show the graph and if you would want to feature scale the sample so that each coefficient dimension have the zero mean and the unit variance you could do that all of these feature extracted uh, all of these extracted features we have in this tutorial are going to be used when we are going to perform the machine learning on the audio set data so all of these feature set and the good understanding about what they are, how they can be used in machine learning is very useful. So we have another one in our list to study and that is the chroma frequencies. So chroma frequencies, they represent the entire spectrum onto the 12 bins and each bin representing 12 distinct semitone or the chroma of the musical octave. So whatever music input you are going to use you are going to get the 12 bins representing the 12 distinct semitone in the given music so let's try this so we are taking a very small i think eight second file and until here here is the feature dot chroma stff stft passing the nd array and the sample rate so hop, hop length we are passing here 512 so these are the values from the chromogram which we got from this chroma stft function shape 12 of 30 357 frames here is your spectrograph for this chroma frequencies for the given time if we want to change this with a different source file here is our custom function let's use a different file this file does not exist so let me see which file exists here so we have temp file one and this is for almost two minute four second if we want to use a different 
file which located here TAT violin and here you could see so this file could be the I think 18 15 20 15 18 20 seconds so there should be the 12 points so if we look into the chroma gram so we had where the 12 properties are chroma gram shape so if you see here this is an array so these are the properties in each one so 12 of these so you can take each one and represent them if you are interested in just to showing one of the particular property and if we see ls we did build a uh, very number three music generation save we didn't save our file here when we were five second so this was a five second we just call it five second wave and let's try to save so we have created a five second wave file let's try to read that one so we will use this and it has a five seconds wave so five seconds and here is the five seconds wave so you can get an idea that those 12 features how they are coming into so if you have a music which has a different variations you might get these features coming differently next in our list is to look into the feature extraction for the rms so root mean square so using librosa rms method you can compute the rms value or the root mean square value for the each frame either from the audio samples or from a spectrogram as so audio samples y is basically the nd array when you are going to read the audio file so here we have our jupyter notebook we are importing all the required modules and here you see that we are loading the built-in audio sample available in the librosa in the next jupyter notebook i will be showing you the variety of audio samples available so we are reading this trumpet and let's see what this audio look like so here is the audio is for the five second audio looking into this there are 117,000 samples for five second now generating the rms values so Librosa feature rms using the nd array here is our rms values and if you would try to save them into rms values and if you take the shape of it next we are using the features rms and the numpy so librosa mag phase and here we are creating the spectrogram so let's see here is the rms and if we, we try to print the rms here Here's the RMS and if you say here is exactly so when you are trying to calculate the RMS you have either from audio samples Y or from the spectrogram so we have seen the, from both way we could get this RMS values from here or from the back face so next we just need to render this graph RMS values and please not define sorry this and then let's build here and based on here you could see that this is the spectrograph for trumpet value and that should give you an idea so that's all I had to show you related with feature extraction so we have covered six different features in this example and next let's take the last example where variety of audio samples available so Librosa here is the list of examples available and here is a humpback whale 
Here is the humpback whale 60 second sound. Let's play it. Let's stop it. Come back here. Try to use that as our source and build the RMS values for that. Here you could see. But here, here the RMS value look like. Oh, sorry. Change it. So there are several things you could do with Librosa. I have just used some of these tutorials which are available. And as you could see here, Chrome STFT, CQT, Constant. So there are various special spectral feature, rhythm feature, and the feature inversions, manipulations. So these are the spectral features and the rhythm features. Now, as our tutorials are concluded, let's push the code to the GitHub. Various audio. So here, we have all the files uploaded to our GitHub repo. It means these files are ready for anyone to use this project and try all these tutorials. In this tutorial, we have covered the basics of using LibRosa Python library to process the audio files and generate some valuable information. In the second step of this tutorial, we use the same Librosa library to perform the feature extractions which are required for our machine learning related work with the audio files. So using the Librosa features methods, we have extracted various audio features and all of these feature extraction techniques are required when you are going to use the machine learning for the audio signals. So this tutorial was designed for you to get started or give you the base information related with audio processing in Python so you can make yourself ready for the machine learning. So that's all we had in this tutorial. I hope you had enjoyed this tutorial and I am looking forward to see you in my next tutorial. Until then, thank you. That's all my friends. If you have enjoyed our content, please like it, share it, subscribe it. And finally, please remember, be good and do good. Thank you.